Absolutely beautiful. It is beautiful. I'm happy with that. Stay lean and feel healthy all year round. It'll leave you feeling light and help you lose weight. Welcome to Living Lean. We've got a great show for you tonight. We'll be visiting the Trupp Cooking School. Damien Noyce will be talking all about fashion. Craig will be making lamb back straps. Also, I'll be making a pumpkin heart with smashed avocado. So let's get ready. What are we cooking today, Craig? Today, Michael, I thought we would cook lamb fillets with spiced lentils and minted yogurt. Sounds nice, what's the first step? First step is we dry fry these spices. We have cumin, garam masala and chili powder in here. So Sounds we'll nice, that... that's gonna give it a bit of spice and a bit of flavour. Certainly will. So just over a medium heat, I've just put a little bit of oil just to stop it from sticking, yeah. just a, probably half a teaspoon. So we just cook that for a few minutes. I'll just put that onto a plate. So just separating half of that. So that, that half of the spice will be for the lentils for yep. later on. This this half we will put over the top of the, we just want to uh, coat the lamb in the spices. So just a bit of a just sort of dry rub. So that, that's coated really nicely. So we're going to add some more oil because we're going to seal the lamb first of all over a high heat yep. and then my preference is to cook at medium rare. Thanks, Michael. So just putting the lamb fillet in. Yeah, you can hear that sound. That's coming up really nicely, Michael. That's getting nicely browned. It's very nice. So what, are you going for it rare, medium rare, uh, well done? I think my preference is medium rare, and most chefs would, yep. would say that. That's coming on nicely. Yeah, it is. It's Browning very nicely, okay? That little piece is right. So it's really important to let the meat rest. So we're going to just let this rest for probably five minutes. Michael, while the meat's resting, we'll prepare the lentils. So I've got two 400 gram cans of uh, lentils here and they've been um, drained. This yep. is two 400 gram cans. I have two teaspoons of fresh freshly grated ginger. Yep. So I'm going to just cook off the ginger in the pan. Now we're going to put the remainder of the spices that we fried off earlier in with the ginger. Now we have the lentils, we'll just add those. We really just want to heat all this through now because everything's cooked. And, and I would just put a pinch of salt in there and just about a quarter of a cup of water in there. Four to five minutes, just heating through. You want to make sure it's hot enough. Now that lamb's been resting for five minutes, mm -hmm. if you could just cook, cut that on an angle. Okay. And I'm going to um, dish up the lentils onto the plate. All right, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to cut the lamb on an angle. And the reason I'm cutting it on an angle is to break down all the connective tissue. So we're just dishing up onto the plate the lentils we've just prepared. Looking good. Yeah, that's the little bed. Yeah, the bed, the healthy bed. Yeah. And then just laying the lamb across the top in the layers. We've got just some Greek natural yogurt here, which I've mixed with freshly chopped mint, fresh mint, and we'll just put a spoon of that on top. You can be fairly generous with it. And there we have it. Shall we taste it? Let's try, Michael. Too. Uh, beautiful, really spicy, fresh and healthy. Give it a try to stay healthy and lose weight.
Um, in the kitchen, cooking Thai chicken patties with a sweet potato and cantaloupe bean mash, and we're also serving it with steamed asparagus. So for this recipe, you will need a food processor, so a high-powered blender, and also we're starting with lean chicken breast. So cube two chicken breasts, and we're popping that into the food processor. And we've got a really nice selection of medicinal herbs that we're using today. So we're using chili, really good for metabolism. I like my chili, so I've got one teaspoon. Next up, we've got ginger, again, one teaspoon. Really good for the gut, really good for digestion, and really good for nausea and travel sickness. Next is lemongrass. We've got one heat tablespoon, and that's just minced lemongrass. You can use fresh. Next is one teaspoon of garlic, minced garlic, or you can use a fresh clove. And we've got some fresh lime. So just one quarter, a squeeze of the juice into the food processor. A little salt and pepper. Next up, we have some fresh coriander. So one handful, rip that off the food processor will do the work for you. And we're using fish sauce. It's a really strong flavour, so not too much. So we've got one teaspoon. That will help balance out the lime juice. Okay, so now we're gonna add an egg to bind. And then put it back onto whiz. Okay, that's come together really nicely, so now we're going to form our patties. So using a tablespoon, one large heap tablespoon, and you can use your hands for this. So into really rough balls, and then pop it onto a chopping board ready to fry. So we've got one small sweet potato, and it's peeled. So peeled and cubed into small pieces, and we're going to pop that into a steamer that I already have on the heat. So while they're cooking, we're going to cook our chicken patties in the fry pan and we're starting with coconut oil. So heat a fry pan over medium heat for me. And we're using extra virgin coconut oil. Okay, so the pan's ready to go. So bring your patties over. We're cooking them for eight minutes in total, so four minutes on each side, so now we're going to flip them. And take your sweet potato off, because that's now cooked, and transfer that into a bowl, and then pop your asparagus in there. So we've got two bunches of asparagus, ends trimmed off. Okay, so while our patties are finishing off, we're going to mash our sweet potato. So we have our cooked sweet potato, and we also have half a cup of cannellini beans. So add that into your sweet potato. And we also have one small tablespoon of organic grass-fed butter. Really good for your thyroid, so add that in as well. Okay, so using your stick blender, and we're on the low setting, we're going to mash them together. Okay, patties are ready, let's check in our asparagus. Okay, another minute for that, and then we're serving up. So we're starting with the mash, and the cannellini beans have held the mash together, and the butter's melted as well. So a big dollop of that into the middle. Beautiful colour as well, really high in antioxidants. So into the middle, and then let's grab our asparagus. So really generous serving of asparagus, really high in all your vitamins and minerals, and helpful with your fibre. Okay, then we're finishing with our patties. They've been sitting and all the juices have run out, so pop that onto the mash. So that's ready to go. A really healthy meal to cook at home for your friends and family. Coming up next, we'll be visiting the Trup Cooking School and Damien Noyce will be talking all about fashion. Thank you. 
I'm back in the kitchen with Walter and Dorota. How are you both? Good Very good, you, thank you. How are you? Very well, thank you. So tell me a little bit about the dessert that you're making. Okay, so what I want to show today is a dessert. You now all of us know how good those drinking coconuts are. I want to show you a trick because there's a flesh inside, which mm -hmm. I will open up in a second, and I want to use that flesh in that recipe. So the first thing I want to show you is, you know, when you buy those coconuts, is it a knife or is it your cleaver? You just use the last bit of it. If yeah. I hit it with that, so I'm going to crush the whole coconut up, so I'll show you that. See, I just hit it once. Doesn't make much of a mess, and it's pretty safe too. Okay, open the lid. There's that white skin. So you've done that once or twice before. Yes, I did, I did. Huh? I'd be afraid to Okay, so I pour all that water out. That's good for drinking. But what nobody ever uses is that part inside. So that's okay, the flesh. See how much flesh there is. That's really a waste because what I do with that, I usually, even if I don't make a chocolate cake, I would just scoop that out. It makes brilliant sauces for like in raw food cooking. All right, so there's the flesh. Okay, so in there I have the flesh of three coconuts. Then approximately add 120 milliliters of coconut water. So I'll just mix that all up yeah. today to show you how simple that recipe is. Yeah, so yeah. The, the beginner at home could do ah, this. Ah, yeah, look, it's easy. The hardest part would be opening the coconut. So it's not that much of a problem. I can say this is the hardest part for most of women. Just getting that cleaver <laughs> action going. I have to ask, have to ask your boyfriend or husband yeah. or partner to do that, yeah. Okay, so a little bit of honey, not too much because it's quite sweet. And then I just blend it all up. So for flavoring, I add a little bit of vanilla. I don't have to worry about doing anything to it. I just throw it in as it okay. is. Okay, so I like to mix it up with other coconut oil because once I add the coconut oil, it will make it really thick. Um, I need to, guys, I need to tell you one thing about that recipe. You need to have your coconut flesh at room temperature and the coconut oil needs to be quite warm. Either one of those ingredients yeah. is too cold, it will sort of split it, you know, it, it makes, mm. it separates the fat particles yeah. from the water particles and then it's, it's, it's a bit grisly. So I add that coconut oil now to it a little bit. And then I just blend that whole thing up again. So what I do now is I just will pour that into those jars. You can see how nice and thick and creamy that is. And later on, once the coconut oil in the fridge goes hard, because as we said, it's a saturated fat, so in its natural state, it's hard like butter. So that will make that just like similar, like a white chocolate mousse or panna cotta. It's a lot in the presentation too. So now we'll just cut some of the strawberries up and throw them in and in between, I think Dada, you could tell us a little bit about that coconut oil. Why is that so good for oh, us? Oh, thank you. Well, coconut oil, it, it is a saturated fat, so a lot of people would be scared of it. Um, I'd say um, give it a go. We have been eating saturated fats for as long as humanity exists and we haven't had a much of a problems with it. Those uh, days, studies confirming that saturated fats are, might not be the case really of uh, cardiovascular disease as we originally thought. So um, make your own research and, and be brave and experiment, especially with coconut oil. It's very yeah. satisfying, it's well, beautiful. It looks very appealing when you look at it. It mm. um, looks absolutely beautiful. Do you think we should give it a try? Why not? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we cannot wait. <laughs> Unbelievable. Wow, mm. that is amazing, Walter. It tastes like a dessert that you'd have at a fine dining restaurant. There you have it. Try this recipe from the Walter Trump Healthy Cooking School if you're trying to lose weight and stay healthy. Jennifer Duke, how are you today, I'm Jennifer? I'm good, how are you? I'm great. So, you're a journalist and writer, and particularly write a blog about Jane Austen. Yes. Can you tell us a bit about what inspires you to write, and why Jane Austen? 
Um, well, when I was about 14, I read Pride and Prejudice, as a lot of people do at that age, mm -hmm. and um, got completely in love with it. For school um, or pleasure? No, just for pleasure. A little bit nerdy back then, <laughs> and uh, still a little bit nerdy. Um, and I started writing about it, then I started watching the adaptations, the 95 BBC one that most people seem to be obsessed with. Colin Firth with right. that. Right, yeah, the wet the shirt, the whole thing. Yeah, and um, slowly became more and more obsessed to the point where I had to just write about it and do something. And I started the blog about four years ago. So particularly of the time, they had a very particular style of fashion. What do you think about that? Because clearly in the books they comment, she comments all the time, and in the film adaptations, it's very strong. It's the biggest thing I think we tend to look at. And I think that's really interesting, because in the novel she doesn't talk much about their appearance, because she assumes that people of the we'll time know. reading will know what they're wearing, right? Um, and now when we see it transposed onto screen, you're suddenly shocked by, oh, they're actually wearing dresses while you know walking through four miles in the mud and all these sorts of things mm. and they're actually dancing in full length gowns and breeches and long boots and all that sort of stuff. So it's very interesting seeing them wearing those clothes and doing these activities that you don't really picture them in in your head. Because they're quite physical. Exactly. And I think as well, seeing them in those dresses, you realise they actually have a lot of room to move. And I mm. think we were talking about this before, but in terms of the in terms of the dances and the balls, they mm -hmm. had to be able to do a lot of physical exercise. And yes. I've done a little bit of Regency dancing, and it's knackering. In the it's yes, a lot of the steps back and <laughs> forward. There's a lot of skipping and dancing around, and yes. it, it truly is very very tiring. And I only did about 30 minutes of it, and they'd be doing it all night. So, in regards to the Regency dancing and the shoes, tell us a bit more about the shoes, because everyone loves shoes. <laughs> does love shoes. Um, I think it's really interesting that they wore so many different pairs and I think people mm. always assume that under there they're wearing boots and things like that and actually they often wore sort of kid little slip shoes and mm. they've been for the dancing and they'd often wear one pair out in just one night for dancing because wow. it was that full on. <laughs> yeah. um, and I also think it's interesting as well the sort of other other little accessories they'd have. So they'd have mm. a dispenser jacket which is really really short mm -hmm. um, and I think that one's quite interesting because it seems to have followed over to the trend of today a little bit. Yeah. I remember maybe a couple of years back we had a lot of people wearing these really really short little cardigans mm. and that's actually from the region Area, that's the Spencer jacket updated yeah. for today. Well, that's lots of great things to think about. Thank you, Jennifer. Thank you for coming today. Coming up next, I'll be making a pumpkin heart with smashed avocado. I'm here with Danny DeVos. Danny is a fitness model, a mum, and has been in the fitness industry as an instructor for 15 years. Danny, welcome. Hi, welcome. Danny's been through a massive transformation. So tell us a bit about your story. When and why did you get started? Yes, well, I guess, Penny, my story can be likened to a lot of women out there where I was quite fit in my 20s. Um, I exercised a lot, and then I became a mum, and I lost myself in the whole scheme of and the focus of being a mum. When my little one, youngest, was two, I decided enough was enough. I got my husband to take a photo of me. But when I saw the photo, I really went, OMG, I need to make a difference. So, yeah, that, that um, became the starting point of the whole transformation journey. So how did you get in shape? Was it predominantly exercise? Well, I'll tell you what, when I did my start of my first transformation challenge, it was with, um, it was an, with women's health and fitness. So it was a 12 week block and I had to do the before and the after image. And in that 12 weeks, I used my knowledge of group fitness. So I did body attack and body pump. Um, and I went on to then win the, the 12 week transformation and featured in the magazine. Oh, and wow. that kind of sparked the snowball effect. Yeah, and so you've created a business based on that inspiration as well, haven't you? Yeah, I have. So after teaching group fitness, I then realized that doing personal training was going to be the next step and developed a program within the Fit and Trim for Life business. So I now coach other women to get into shape um, and we use personal training techniques as well as a little bit of group fitness and just the conventional things that really mean you've got to exercise and move and eat really well. And what are your goals going forward with your career now then? Well, I'm become a little bit more aware and discovered field of fitness modelling. So my next adventures have always been along those lines. I've also taken is to teach kids Zumba. 
So I think the foundation of our youth leads into our future. So um, with, your, with your next goals and your journey going forward, what would be your top tip for people that are trying to get in shape and what you've learned so far? Um, stick to the game plan, you know, if you know what you want, like I said before, it's not a short term or it might start as a short term, but it's got to be a lifestyle change. So everyone can jump online and follow your Fit and Trim for Life program? Yes, you can find me at fitandtrimforlife.com.au or on Facebook at Fit and Trim for Life. Great, thanks Demi. Thank you. I'm making a healthy heart meal. Why it's a healthy heart meal? Because I'm using monosaturated fats, the good fats for your cholesterol levels, which increase HDL, the good cholesterol in the blood. So my healthy heart meal is going to look like this. That's a pumpkin heart. I'm gonna show you how to cut out a pumpkin heart. What I do is I get a little bit of baking paper, about say 20 centimetres or so. Tear it off like that, and then fold it in half. So then fold it in half like that and I'm going to get a heart shape. So basically I've got a pencil and I'm going to draw a heart shape. So basically coming over and just like that. So then I'll cut out my heart. So just with my kitchen scissors, I'll cut it out like so. And there's my heart. This is my heart. The heart is about 300 grams, about that size. So what I'm gonna do next is I've got a bread knife. Now look down the spine of your knife like so, and then just get a nice straight cut there like that. Go around, getting a nice straight cut like so. So now, using my wrist, this is the part that I'm cutting with. So just, just move in like that and then moving right round, and it's giving me a nice guide. So I've got it fairly even. The next part, I'm going to try and cut it about that thin. So just there, remember the claw, and then again. So just go around, so you get about the same width right round, and then so now I've got my heart shape there and use my big knife first, cut in there like so, make my second cut, start to sort of follow where I'm going there, cut like so. Now I'm going to get my peel up and I'm going to start shaping it a little. And there's my heart shape. Now I'm going to use my heart here and I'll put a little bit of olive oil in. Now olive oil is an excellent monosaturated fat, a good fat which is high in high density lipoprotein. So basically now you're going to hear that nice sizzle. And what we're doing is we're grilling vegetables. So basically I'm going to go for about four minutes on each side. Now I'm going to add my mushrooms and my zucchini second. They won't take as long. So this is gonna add a lot of fiber and complex carbohydrate to my meal. Now I'm chopping a serrano chili. So basically with my knife, flat like so. You don't have to have chili in this dish if you don't like it hot. Chili is also very good because it increases the basal metabolic rate. So I really like the chili. So in goes my chili. Now there's a little bit of shallot. I like shallot for a bit of flavor. Then my avocado. So basically just with the avocado like that. So it's about four minutes. So now I'll turn it over. Now I'll be very gentle with it because I don't want it to break apart. So, so now I'll put my second part of avocado. So don't be afraid to use your hands and it'll just scoop out like so. A little bit of olive oil. And this is my avocado mash. Now, just a little bit of salt, touch of pepper, and I'm gonna use a little bit of red wine vinegar, just to give it a little bit of acid in there. That's my mash, and that's ready to go onto my pumpkin. I leave that to the side, and actually, I'm gonna put a little bit of feta cheese in there, just a sprinkle. 
This will give it a little bit of a nice cheesy flavour. Now my water's boiling and I'm going to bring it back down to champagne bubbles and I'm going to poach my egg. So basically I'm using a large amount of white vinegar, like that. Then I gently put my egg in, like so. So I bring my plate over and I'm ready to start constructing my meal. My heart goes in there. A little bit of zucchini and some mushrooms. And next is smashed avocados. Now it's time for my poached egg to come out of the water. So I'll take it out with a slotted spoon and then I'll sl gently place my egg on top. Sprouts here, so this will add to the flavour. And then just a, a touch of black pepper. Give this a try at home if you want to stay healthy and you want an alternative to bread.